Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 87 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we will discuss about authenticating users using Windows authentication. In parts 85 and 86 of this video series, we discussed about anonymous authentication. Anonymous authentication is fine for websites that contain public information that everyone can see. However, if the websites contain private information or perform tasks such as booking tickets, placing orders, etc., then the users need to be authenticated and authorized. And there are several ways to authenticate and authorize users. In this session, we're going to talk about Windows authentication. Windows authentication identifies and authorizes users based on the server's user list. Access to the resources on the server is then granted or denied based on the user account's privileges. Windows authentication is best suited for intranet web applications because in an intranet we have a, a network domain and then all the users have Windows accounts and based on their level or the group they belong to, there are permissions set at their account level, at their Windows account level. Now, the advantage of using Windows authentication is that the web application can use the exact same security scheme that applies to that corporate network. Usernames, passwords and permissions are the same for network resources and web applications. And as far as ASP.NET Web Application is concerned, we can configure security at two levels. You know, we can configure uh, in IIS and in the web.config file of the application. Let's actually see how to configure window, you know, Windows authentication in the IIS first. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have a very simple ASP.NET Web Application project here. The code you see here is the same code that we have been working with in the previous sessions of this video series. So in the page load event, this particular line prints out the name of the account that is used to execute the application code. Here we are figuring out whether the user is authenticated or not. We are using the is authenticated property. And similarly, we are finding out what's the authentication type and the name of the authenticated user. Okay, and in the button click event, so if you look at the web form, on the web form I have a grid view control and a button control. So when we click the button, we are creating an instance of the data set object. That data set is reading an XML file from C data. So in C colon data, I have countries.xml. So we are reading that XML data into the data set, which is then used as the data source for the grid view control, and we are invoking the data bind. Okay, now this application is actually deployed to IIS as well. So to open IIS, in the run window type inet mgr and click OK. That should open up IIS. And within IIS, I have, you know, once we expand the root node on the default website, we have this web application one here, which is actually pointing to our web application one project. So this is deployed to this application within IIS. And if you look at this application, if I right click on that manage application and select advanced settings, Look at that, the application pool that this application is associated with is default app pool. Okay, and then let's actually look at the application itself. So I have this web application one, and if I look at the authentication, by default, anonymous authentication is enabled, and we have discussed about anonymous authentication in the previous session. Okay, now let's enable Windows authentication. To enable Windows authentication in IIS, all we have to do is look at this, select Windows authentication and click the enable link under actions within IIS. So click enable, so Windows authentication is now enabled. Okay, so if you look at the situation now, we have anonymous authentication and Windows authentication enabled. And we haven't done any changes within the application itself. So within the web.config file, I haven't made any security related changes. All we have done so far is enable Windows authentication in IIS. Now let's go ahead and run this application with that, uh, you know, settings. So now, obviously, this is running off the IIS, and look at this. Is user authenticated? False. The user is not authenticated, meaning the application is still using anonymous authentication. Okay, now, if you remember, we have just enabled Windows authentication, but still, the application is using anonymous authentication. That's because, if you look at this, within IIS, we have both uh, anonymous authentication and Windows authentication enabled. Okay, if both of them are enabled, 
So if both anonymous and Bendos authentication are enabled in IIS, and if we don't have a deny entry for anonymous users in the web.config file, then the resources on the web server are accessed using anonymous authentication. That's what we have just seen. So this is a resource on the web server. Webform1.aspx is a resource on the web server. Now, since we have anonymous and Bendos authentication enabled in the IIS and in the web.config file, we are not denying access to anonymous users. So by default, the resources of that web server are accessed anonymously. Okay, so how do we disable, you know, access to anonymous users? There are two ways. One simple way is again in IIS. So in IIS, just disable anonymous access. So we disabled anonymous access. Now let me go ahead and access this page. So I click enter now, look at that. Is user authenticated? True. And authentication type used? Negotiate, I mean, which is Windows authentication. And look at this, what is the username? The username of the authenticated user? It says prasad-pc backslash prasad. So in, on this machine, the machine name is prasad-pc. And I'm logged into this computer as prasad. Okay, so, so, so that is the account that is used to authenticate myself because that's the Windows username that I have used to log into the computer, and that account is used by the web server to authenticate me. Okay, so that's how we can enable authentication. Now, let's go go ahead and enable anonymous authentication here, and obviously, as you might expect. If we have anonymous authentication and Windows authentication enabled, obviously the request is being served using anonymous authentication. And we have just seen how to disable anonymous authentication in IIS. Now let's go ahead and see how to disable anonymous authentication within web.config file. So within web.config file, so at the moment our IIS allowing both anonymous authentication and Windows authentication. And let's go to the web.config file and within here, under system.web, I'm going to have an authorization element. And within authorization element, I'm going to have a deny entry. So I'm going to deny access to users question mark. So what does question mark mean? Question mark has a special meaning when used within the authorization element. Question mark means anonymous users, users who are not authenticated. So basically, IIS allows anonymous users as well. But once the request is handed over to ASP.NET, within the web.config file, I'm saying deny access to anonymous users. So the web application actually filters access uh, to anonymous users here. So let me go ahead and now let's save this first, the web.config file. And then if we refresh this at this stage, look at that, you know, though IIS allows anonymous authentication in the web.config file, we are saying deny access to anonymous users. That's why the resource is now accessed using uh, Windows authentication. So to, dis to disable, uh, you know, anonymous authentication in web.config file, all we do is add this deny element. And if you want to have the application code, so if you look at this code at the moment, you know, after I am authenticated, look at this, I'm using the uh, Windows account to log into the computer, which is the same account that is used by the web server to authenticate me. But once the user is authenticated, and once the request is handed over to ASP.NET, then the application code by default is executed using the application pool identity. But let's say I want the application code to be executed using the logged in user identity. Then what can I do in the previous session we have discussed about impersonation. So we can enable impersonation. Once we enable impersonation, then the application code will be executed using the logged in user identity. So whatever permissions the logged in user has, you know, that permissions will be applied to, act, to, to allow or deny access to the resources on the web server. So the same settings of the corporate network are applied to that web application as well. Okay, let's see how to quickly enable impersonation. So all we have to do to enable impersonation is within system.web, specify identity, impersonate is equal to true. Save the settings, return to the web form. Let's refresh this one. 
look at that the application code is now executed using the logged in user identity so if you want to have the application code executed using the logged in user identity then enable impersonation impersonation can be enabled through IIS or by adding the following element to web.config file we have just seen how to um, you know enable impersonation and we can do that using IIS as well and we have discussed this in previous sessions as well so ASP.NET impersonation at the moment it is disabled uh, but let me say I mean actually it's enabled because we didn't refresh that so it's enabled so if I select that and if I click on disable this will automatically update the web.config file that is associated with the web application project so look at that automatically it's changed it to false so impersonation can be done through IIS or we can directly hand edit that within web.config file so if impersonation is enabled the application code executes using the permissions found in your account so if the logged in user has access to a specific network resource only then will he be able to access that resource through the application on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day